Welcome to ECE 341 Random Processes, lecture number 20, Markov Chains. Now, Markov Chains is kind of a different uh, spin on random processes, something I kind of get a real kick out of. It's a way to describe infinite series, like if you have a baseball game, and you have to win by three games. So, to give an idea what a Markov Chain is, consider the following problem. Suppose I've got two teams, A and B, are playing a match. Team A has a 70% chance of winning at any given match, and the first team to win three games wins the match. That's actually not a Markov chain. That's a binomial distribution. This is flipping a coin five times. If I get heads, or A, three, four, or five times, then A has won the match. Otherwise, B has won the match. Uh, consider a second problem. Again, I've got two teams playing a game. A's got a 70% chance of winning. To win the match, however, A has to win by three games. Now, this is a totally different problem. If A wins, then B wins, you're back where you started. By being up three games, you get a totally different problem. To solve that, we need a different tool. That's a Markov chain. A classic example in Markov chains is the following. I've got three people playing ball. Every uh, sample every k seconds, they toss the ball. Half the time, A keeps the ball if A has the ball, passes it to B 20% of the time, and C 20%. B has the ball. If B has the ball, B keeps it 60% of the time, passes it to A or C, and then if C has the ball, it passes it to A or B. This is a system where I've got a state. X of k is the probability that A, B, or C has the ball, and it's a discrete time system. X of k plus 1 is some state transition matrix A times X of k, and that A is different than this A. Uh, to express that, oftentimes we'll do a little diagram like this, bubble diagram, expressing the probabilities of going from one state to the next. If A has the ball at time equals 0, I might want to know what is the probability that B has the ball after k tosses. What's the probability that B has the ball after infinite number of tosses? This is the type of problem that Markov chains are designed to solve. And this lecture covers three different ways to analyze this type of problem. Uh, matrix multiplication, the use of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and z-transforms. Now to start out, if I want to use matrix multiplication, I'm going to define three states. Let x be the state of the system. That's got three elements, the probability that A has the ball, probability B has the ball, and probability that C has the ball. Then to define the state transition matrix, x of k plus 1 is this matrix times x of k, and the initial condition. Note that the state transition matrix, all the columns have to add up to 1. That's, the prob that's uh, basically saying all probabilities have to add to 1. In addition, you can kind of see the probabilities in this matrix. The first column is what happens if A has the ball. X of K is the probability who has the ball. If it's 1, 0, 0, A's got the ball. That says A keeps the ball half the time, passes it to B 20%, passes it to C 30%. The second column is if B has the ball, 0, 1, 0 for the states. If B has the ball, B passes it to A 30% of the time, keeps it 60%, passes it to C 10%, and so on. So you can basically see the state transitions in the same matrix. To analyze the problem, one approach is to use matrix multiplication. First, input the, the state transition matrix into MATLAB. Input the initial condition, A has the ball. Then after one toss, x of k plus 1 is A times x of k. After one toss, A will have the ball half the time, B is at 20%, C is at 30%. Multiply by A again, I have two tosses. And three tosses, and four tosses, and five tosses. Keep going. This is where you are after 100 tosses. Eventually, x quits changing. This is the steady state solution. Oftentimes, you want to find out where is the, what is the steady state solution. To find that using matrices, all you have to do is pick a large number, like 100, and raise x to that high power. And usually, that finds the answer. If there is a steady state, that's what it'll be. One way to check your answer is try like a of 100, a to the 100th power, 101, 102. If they're all the same, you're at steady state. Sometimes the Markov chains, the ball just keeps on spinning around a circle. In that case, there really is no steady state. 
and A100 will be different than A101 or A102 power. A second way to solve is you can solve it using matrix algebra. In steady state, by definition, x of k plus 1 equals x of k. That's also a times x of k. So here, solve for x. Uh, bring the x to the right, I have a minus i times x of k equals 0. Either x of k is 0, which is the trivial solution, or a minus i is 0. Taking the a matrix minus the identity matrix gives you this. Uh, let c equal 1, then solve for a and b. And what you get is these numbers. Those aren't a valid probability. They don't sum to 1. So scale them so they do sum to 1. That's a steady state solution. And if you notice, this number, 0 0.39, 0 0.44, 0 0.12, is the same thing we got here, 0 0.39, 0 0.44, hmm, it's supposed to be 0.12. I think they are the same, I just transposed two numbers. Uh, second solution, eigenvalues, eigenvectors. The problem we're trying to solve is x of k plus 1 is a times x of k. Given an, an initial condition, that's actually an eigenvalue, eigenvector problem. Uh, eigenvalues tell you how a system behaves, eigenvectors tell you what behaves that way. That's why you cover eigenvalues, eigenvectors in Math 129. The general solution will always be in this form. It will be some constant times the first eigenvector times the eigenvalue to the k plus another constant times the second eigenvector times the eigenvalue to the k. This is the general solution for any initial condition. Lambda is the eigenvalue, capital lambda is the eigenvector, and a's are the constants. At k equals 0, the initial value, anything but the 0 power is 1, so we just have a times lambda 1 plus a times lambda 2. Put that in matrix form. The initial condition tells you how much you excite each eigenvector. If you solve, the initial condition of 1, 0, 0 excites the eigenvectors as 0 0.61 times the first eigenvector, 0 0.54 times the second, 0 0.93 times the third. This is a constant. The eigenvector is a constant. I can combine the two. And this is the equivalent solution. So this is the probability the ball is in person A, or player B, or player C at any given time. For player B, I just want the second row. And also notice, this is the steady state solution. These go to zero as k goes to infinity. Here's your steady state solution. That's the same answer we got before, 0 0.39, 0 0.44, 0 0.16. Another way to find the steady state solution is to look at the eigenvalues eigenvectors. The eigenvalue at 1 has a corresponding eigenvector. That eigenvector is your steady state solution. This isn't a valid probability. The column doesn't sum to 1. If I scale it so that it is 1, there's my steady state solution. Same answer we got before. So that's three ways to find the steady state. Another way is to use Z transforms. Now the problem we're solving is x of k plus 1 is your state transition matrix a times x of k given an initial condition. I can rewrite that. x of k is a times x of k minus 1 plus my initial condition times delta of k. This kicks in at k equals 0. If I shift it forward in time and take the z transform, x of k plus 1 is z times x, a times x is a times x, and a delta function is just 1. One delta function, one sample in the future, is z times x0. So to determine the probability that b has the ball, look at the second state which is your c times x. To solve, what you do is you take your system, solve for x, now substitute y equals cx with that little z coming out in front. So this is the steady, or this is the z transform for my output. To plug in numbers, what I could do is, here's my c matrix, observe the second state. Here's the zi minus a times b, Multiply this out, I'll get a polynomial in z. That's the z transform of y. That's rather painful to do, but fortunately, there's MATLAB to the rescue. In MATLAB, I can input a system like this by inputting the system using the MATLAB command state space. If I see Momo, here's my kitty, Come, came by to say hi. You can input the system in state space. Uh, this is your A matrix. Your B matrix is your initial condition. Your C matrix, which you're looking at, 
and d is zero. T is the sampling rate, we'll just say one. You toss the ball every one toss, or every one second. Once I get the system into MATLAB, I can find the transfer function or the zeros and poles. Uh, note in this form, it doesn't have the z out in front, so when I'm done, I'll have to multiply the answer by z to get the actual z transform. So in MATLAB, what I would do is input the A matrix, input my initial condition, A has the ball, look at my output, I want to see what's the probability that B has the ball, input the system in MATLAB using state space, and then find the transfer function. Uh, note this is off by z, I need to multiply the numerator by z, which is fairly easy to do. But here's my the z transform of b having the ball in transfer function form. This is in factored form. Factored form is actually much more useful. So to find b of k, what I'll do is I'll take the factored form, multiply it by z, now take the inverse z transform. To do that, I'll pull the z outside, because my table of z transforms has a z over z minus 1, z over z minus a. So I want to save that z. Do your partial fraction expansion, multiply through by z again. Now I can just use the table. This has the inverse z transform of 0 0.6, 0 0.054, minus 3.1 times 0 0.259, 0 0.256 to the k, plus 2.5 times 0 0.15 to the k for time positive. There's my answer. Again, not too bad using z-transforms. And this is what the output looks like. Kind of notice that if a has the ball initially at k equals 0, 20% of the time a pass passes the ball to b, that's the probability b has the ball after one toss, 2, 3, 4, and eventually reach my steady state solution. Sometimes you can have complex poles. For example, if I have a ring like this, and A passes the ball to B, B passes it to C, C passes it to A, I'm going to get a complex eigenvalue. What that means is just there's oscillations in the system. A has the ball, I won't get the ball again until two more tosses, and then two tosses after that. Complex eigenvalues really aren't a problem. You just have to use the transform identity. When you do your partial fraction expansion, if you have a complex pole, I'm going to have a complex numerator. What this means is twice the amplitude is your time value. That comes from Euler's identity. The amplitude of the pole is your b to the k. The angle is the frequency of oscillations. It rotates by phi degrees every sample. And the phase shift turns out it's the 1 over the minus v. It goes over here. So that's the inverse z transform with complex poles. If you don't mind complex numbers, they're just the same as real numbers. For example, if I change the problem, so I have this ring system. Uh, come up with a corresponding A matrix, initial condition, one find the probability that B has the ball. Repeat what we did before, input A, initial condition C, input in the state space, find the zeros and poles. I now have complex poles here. Multiply by Z, just like we did before. And here's the Z transform of the output. Do partial fraction expansion, and I get complex numerators. Again, that's not a problem. When I multiply through by z, this is going to be twice the amplitude. 2 times 0.7 is 0.55, times 0.71 to the k, cosine of 106 degrees to the k times k, shifted by this guy over here, shifted by plus 126 degrees. That's, um, that's b of k. And what that looks like is this. This oscillation, that's your complex pole. So that's Markov chains, uh, how to solve problems. We have A of k, or x of k is some matrix A of k times x of k with that initial condition. Games such as playing a series until somebody wins.